Hello, everybody. We are in the same clothes because we're recording this episode right after we recorded the last episode. Wait a minute. Did anyone get changed? Me, because it's cold. Allie did. I, I thought about Different. it. I mean, I had this shirt on before, but I, I can just I can just show my run D&D shirt all day. Oh, that's cute. Nice. I like but, that uh, shirt. No, we, I just uh, put on more clothes, so it's not <laughs> like changing. Fit, well, kind of. It's kind of changing, right? How's it going, everybody? I'm Steve Oslot. This is Rabble Rousers, and this is the team all around me. My sides and to my Howdy. lower sides. We have Hi. your Fanville hands Hi. right there. Hi. Hi. Hello. Moxie. Hello. Ignatius. Hi. Raymond. Hello. And we are back with another episode. Uh, last we left off, our team found themselves in a... <laughs> In an ass basement, uh, and then in a ass basement, and then in a sub ass basement, uh, they found themselves in a sub basement of a uh, a ruined uh, temple or an abandoned temple in the town of Oakshire, uh, on the search for a young dwarven boy um, named Yankel Ember Spire who had gone missing. Uh, the whole town was out searching all over the place, and uh, some had taken to the woods, some had taken to the old abandoned tower, some had taken to the actual town itself, basements and the such. Uh, but our group of uh, uh, of weirdos here all decided to go take a look at the abandoned tower, uh, and they did, and they found themselves in this uh, this basement uh, blocked off by a passageway for Ball, um, this un relatively unknown entity, uh, some sort of uh, deity or quasi deity, at least as much as Fignatius knows, uh, and they found themselves in the sub basement, aka the sub ass basement. Finding the boy, uh, and after defeating a pair of shadows that were doing some sort of ritual with the boy to open a door down there, uh, they defeated them and rushed the boy off to uh, town to help him out because he wasn't in good shape. And this is where we pick up this game. Uh, as the four of you, uh, with uh, the floating Ninja Turtles, Tensor's Disc, uh, carrying Fignatius and uh, the Ember Spire boy, you find yourselves back uh, at the top of the stairs in the uh, the basement of the abandoned temple. What would you like to do? Hey, Figgy, did that thing uh, move any faster? Do, can you just move a little slower? Can you just, like, have a little bit of patience? <laughs> do not criticize my disc, which is not a disc. Ray it's a board. Raymond scoffs and continues walking, speeding up even. Unlike Uncaring Raymond, and now I'm going to reestablish my mind link, and then now I'm talking via via brainwaves at you. Unlike you, I care about the boy, and I'm going to stay with him. And I will bring him back to town, and I am going to be the hero. Just saying. Or I should say just think. Ray, Ray, Ray keeps walking. Your Griff wants to... We're in the basement, you said, right? You are. He wants to check out the t the original table that had the small uh, skull and like uh, tear imprints on it, and see if anything has changed since the last time they were there. Okay. So Fignatius and Raymond are working their way over to uh, to the corner of the building, which will lead to the outside. Uh, as as uh, Moxie following with Yurgriff, Yurgriff walks and kind of just stops and moves over to the table, and you start to assess what's going on. And you see this this table is uh, we didn't really get to describe it very well last time because we had an episode that got blown away. Uh, and if you watch our last episode, we explain all that. But uh, essentially, this table is a very long conference style table. Uh, it is made of uh, a type of stone that really doesn't belong here. And it is all one piece. It is probably about 12 to 14 feet long, uh, maybe 6 to 8 feet wide. Uh, and it is surrounded by these wooden chairs, except for one chair, which is almost like a a uh, stone-type throne made of the same type of, uh, of stuff. Uh, on the center of this table, and uh, also uh, engraved in all of these chairs, but on the center of this table, there is a... Uh, an engraving and an indent of a skull with um, with blood droplets all around it. The skull, uh, which uh, Fignatius identified as a sigil of Baal. Uh, and before, Yurgriff had put his hand onto that and was pinpricked 
uh, a number of times, dripping his blood into it to open the door, which allowed them downstairs. And you're at that now, and you're looking at it. Um, make an investigation check to see if anything looks different to you. And, uh, I know that our, our players know what this looked like, but anyone tuning in can take a look at the chat, and that is what he's looking at. Um, <coughs> 14. So, uh, you notice... You do notice one thing, and you hadn't noticed it before because you didn't bother to to need to notice it. Uh, you had cut yourself, and you had dripped blood in each one of these blood droplets, and it, it lit up the eyes, and it opened the door to the other side of the room. Now that you're looking at it, each blood droplet actually has its own pin sticking out of it, uh, as if to match the 12 seats. Out of, well, there are 13 seats, 12, the 12 wooden seats at the table, as if to match one person to prick their finger and drip their own blood into that section. Uh, you hadn't noticed that before. That is the only thing that you do pick up, though. Nothing's changed. It's still there. Your blood is in there. It's it's still a little wet. You haven't been downstairs very long. All right, your griff uh, turns his attention away from it and towards getting the boy to the surface. Okay. As the group uh, makes their way out and uh, assisting um, Ignatius with getting the boy through the very small crack, uh, taking him off of Tensor's floating disc and getting everything out and then putting him back on, you find yourselves back into the, uh, the wooded area uh, just to the uh, the northeast side of Oakshire, um, and as you round the corner, you notice that the two uh, the two guards that had been out front uh, have uh, one of them has absconded. Uh, the little gnome is still there, the one that who was just kind of being a jackass, and and it was clearly new. I uh, didn't really know a whole lot of what he was doing. He was looking, kind of just trying to look tough. He's sitting there, and he is he's standing up, and he is you know he's he's maybe two and a half, three foot nothing, and he's just kind of sitting there with his dagger in front of him, looking back and forth as you guys round the corner, but you see no uh, no sight of um, of our other friend uh, by the name of John Bombastic, Johnny Bombastic. And he says, ah, hey, right. hey, hey, you guys, you guys are back. You found, oh, holy, holy crap, you found the kid. Raymond um, <clears throat> looks over at the gnome, and he just says, Hey, uh, gnome, so uh, what's your name? Oh, well, goddammit, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> no, my name, my name's, uh, Durp. D you say Durp? Dep? No, Durp. <laughs> nah, Durp, we have found the boy, uh, just like I told you we would. Well, that's, that's great. Uh, Johnny Johnny went off to go to go let the uh, the council know that uh, that you guys were were in there searching. Um, but that's that that that's great. Uh, I'm glad you found him because uh, man, I, I didn't really I didn't really didn't want to go down there. And, and you see, he's he's actually sweating a little bit. Like he's he's worried that he was gonna have to go in after you guys. So he abandoned his post. Then is what you're telling me. Uh, no, 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 no! It was it was official business. I'm watching the doors. Don't don't worry. I've got this. And you see him. He stands up straight again, and he's got his his dagger kind of at the ready at his chest. You Says, look I, very scary. Th thank you. I'll, I'll 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 continue to guard. And when when Johnny comes back, he can he can take over. I mean, he is he is kind of my boss, I guess. Your Griff, pats him. Uh, hot. They're not next to each other, correct? No. Okay. Um. Is the boy back on the on the on the disc? Yes. Okay. Uh. He says, "Well, you are doing a fine job, my friend. Uh, we are gonna go deliver this boy to his family." Uh, y y you do that. Now, don't don't forget to let him know that we let you in. <laughs> Oh, I will make sure it is uh, my first priority. I'll make sure that everybody knows that you let us in. Well, thanks. Uh, I, hope, I hope he's okay. He doesn't look, he doesn't look too good. I mean, he starts to walk over. You know over. the place where you're not supposed to let anybody into, including a child? Uh, I don't... Uh... 
Oh no. Oh, this is my, wait, Who's is this to my say fault? That you let us in that you didn't let this child in. You see him he, you see him calculating now looking back at the child and looking at you Moxie and looking at the child. I I, I didn't mean to let him in. I'm new, I'm new at the job. We were just trying to we, we, we got the front door. He, he's just like starting to spout off these excuses as to why it's possible that he missed the child. Um you see this 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 Durp is uh he's frazzled. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, and he backs away. He, like he was walking up to the child to kind of see what was going on, and he backs away real quick and goes back up to his post and says, "And I'll and I'll and I'll continue watching it too. No one else will get in here. I promise. I promise." Uh, your griff says nothing and just keeps walking. What's the I've figure? been speeding away this whole time. So uh, fig, my, fig, on my, my skateboard. So Figgy, Figgy's still on the uh, on on his his uh, his uh, fate board um, with the boy, and like they're just kind of like speeding away, as in like they're maybe thirty feet ahead of you guys at this point, who are just chatting because he can't move that fast on the board. Uh, but you all uh, presumably go catch up with Figgy, um, and you get to the main road, and it's it's pretty desolate. There's like the, this is the. There are two roads in and out of this town, and one heads to the southeast, kind of, and one heads to the southwest. And, you know, it, it, at least your griff, uh, you would know for sure, like, the directions, but, you know, Fignatius and Moxie, you're new to town, but you've been here for a few days. Raymond, you kind of walked in through the woods, so you have no idea where those roads go. But uh, you are, the, the majority of you know that, like, you know, one of them heads kind of out into Damara proper. Uh, it's the way that you would take to get out into the plains and rolling hills and all that to try to head off to other areas. The one to the southeast, you know, uh, will will eventually hit a mountain pass, which will take you out of Damara and in, into uh, a whole other um, other area of the continent. Um, but you reach this kind of uh, thoroughfare, we should say, where uh, where Fignatius's um, cart is, where he sells his cheeses, uh, and there's no one really here. You do hear people. Uh, yelling in the woods not too far to the south like he's not over this way keep looking over there so you can hear like echoes of that happening um you know the whole town is searching for this boy as well as you guys are kind of heading up towards the town center where the uh the ipso facto mayor uh i guess you could call him um the guy who is he's really just another another councilman um was originally talked to and, and you guys talked to him about going and actually trying to find the boy uh, his name was uh, Jeffrey Lynn Sr., uh, and he's the owner of Oakshire Lumber, the biggest trade in this town. But you're heading off in that direction, and you start to see more people, and you see this one woman. She's just kind of like, she looks out, she's looking out her window, and she says, They found, they found, they found him! And you, you watch her push her, her, like, her windows open, and she just sh starts yelling out, Yurgur found, Yurgur found the boy! Yurgur found him! And that starts echoing across kind of everywhere as you guys start heading into the thoroughfare and you hear more uh, the the uh, town center rather more and more people start coming out from their searches and coming out from inside and things like that uh and that murmuring of you know they found him they found him he's 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 here he's okay he's okay is kind of rummaging around your brains as you're walking out into this area and the crowd starts to gather uh your griff acknowledges the woman in the window with just like a wave and is like uh now i want y'all to know it was not just your griff it was your griff anvil hands and his incredible troop of friends that we went into and found the boy uh it was not a solo mission my friends did assist and take down some pretty savage beasts so uh i would like their accolades to be spread across oakshire as well um, as you're as you're saying this, you uh, you see Jeffrey Lynn Senior and a number of other council folk kind of coming out from the council chamber area and walking towards you all. Um, you see uh, Jeffrey Lynn uh, look over to one of them and say something as that person kind of rushes off in the direction of the uh, the house of the Ember Spires, where you had talked to um, uh, the uh, Ember Spire grandfather, excuse me, the boy's grandfather. Uh, before heading out on your trek, and you see somebody kind of heading off in that direction, presumably to go let them know that they found the child. Um, a number of people are 
are patting you on the back, uh, Yara Griffin. And another, uh, another of people are kind of walking around to, to Moxie and Fignatius and, and Raymond and, and like shaking your hands and asking your names and things like that. They don't all know all of you. They know Yara Griff. They've seen him around town for years and years and years. But uh, as Yara Griff kind of spreads this around, everyone takes that recognition and you you just see smiles. You see people crying. You see people, you know, ha just happy faces as you're all kind of being congratulated for, for getting the child. Uh, it's at this point, um, a, uh, can a, Raymond, can Raymond pipe up at this point? Yeah. Uh, Raymond, <clears throat> Raymond just kind of, he finds like a, a milk crate somewhere and he stands on, he just says, um, yeah, uh, Hey, let's stop patting each other on the back and let's get this boy some goddamn medical help. See? Great minds. Uh, so yeah. it's, a, it's about at the, it's about at this point uh, you see a uh, a a gnomish man um, holding like a like a leather satchel uh, running kind of in the direction uh, with people like you know kind of following up behind him uh, and he comes up and uh, you're Griff, you recognize uh, this guy as as uh, Zimtag and you know that Zimtag is uh, the uh, what suffices for the the local MD? Um, he knows the most about medicine. He's very proficient in the ways of herbalism and things like that. And you see him come rushing up, and and for for such a small for such a small gnome, his voice booms, and you can all you can all hear this, and it, it's very it's very deep, and it's it's much more it's much more uh, can uh, I guess confident than what you had just heard from uh, from Dorip down the down the street he says all right, all right everyone everyone out of the way everyone come on everyone get out of the way get out crowding you crowding get 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 these people out of here I gotta get to the boy and he's <clears throat> he's not really having trouble getting around people people aren't being you know aren't being a pain in the ass he's just saying all this while he's really literally just walking through legs <laughs> and he gets up and he says uh Oh man, uh, he looks malnourished. Uh, he, he needs he needs water. He starts pulling things out of his bag, um, and you see him take a take a, this leaf out and he he rubs it around the kid's nostrils, uh, puts his finger up there to make sure he's breathing okay, uh, and then puts some of the same leaf in the boy's mouth and kind of gnashes his his jaw a little bit to chew it in. Um, you do see at this point it's the very first time uh, the boy has really given any semblance of being alive aside from he's breathing uh, his eyes start to flicker and flutter a little bit he's still wholly unconscious but he's he's there and whatever this thing is that this doctor put in his mouth kind of roused the kid he lost oh, a lot of blood how, how much blood how much blood did he lose Quick, quick, quick. No time, no time. How much? Uh, about this many tearfuls. I would, uh, guesstimate about two quarts. Two quarts? F fuck, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, uh, come on. We gotta get, we gotta get him inside. Let's take him to his parents' house. And uh, as you start heading down, uh, in that direction and kind of keeping the crowd at bay, uh, he's still on the, you know, he's still on the disc. Fignatius is still kind of sitting on the, uh, on the, you know, the disc skate. I can't, I'm going to always call it the disc, dude. I know it's a skateboard, but uh, he's still that sitting on it as well. And you're all heading down that way. And you just, the doors, as you're getting kind of close to the house, blast open and slam on the sides of the house as the mother comes running out, yelling, Yankel, Yankel. And she, like, she gets into the street and she looks and she sees and she rushes over and almost tackles Fignatius off the thing, trying to get at her son. As the doctor, um, Zimtag, just says, uh, 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 L'Oreal, come on, L'Oreal, we need to calm down. P somebody get her off, please, please. I he's okay, he's okay. And she's like, she's like smothering her un semi unconscious son, and he's asking for help. Uh, I'll go up to the the mother, and I'll try to like, I'm not trying to pull her off. I'm just trying to like coax her off of him. Okay. Oh, it's um, okay. Make a make a persuasion check. She's uh she's she's in in tears of happiness and she's a little beside herself right now but she 
you start talking to her and you're like, it's okay. It's okay. And, uh, how do you, with a 15, how do you get her to uh, like eventually just kind of let the doctor do his business? Hey, listen, he's okay. We saved him. But if you keep holding him like that, the doctor can't work. And then, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. You're right. You're right. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, then she's just she's kind of steps back but stays and she's still like she's holding on to his feet and walking with the, the disc as it's going forward as the doctor is kind of like checking his body for punctures and all these other things uh and you finally make your way into the house and this crowd's following behind to see what's going on i mean this is a pretty small village it's not everyone knows each other even if just at an acquaintance level and this is kind of a big deal uh, as you're getting kind of closer to the house and getting to the door, you do see some people coming out of the woods. The the word has made its way around that the boy's been found. But uh, you get inside, and uh, and and Zimtag looks at uh, looks at Raymond and says, "You," and points at you and your your Griff and says, "Get on that door. Don't let anybody in. Let's take care of the boy. They can gawk another time. We don't get time for this shit." You, Fignacious, right? Uh, and and Moxie, Moxie, get o- get over here. Get over here. Um. And he starts to, like, lay out his stuff on the table. He asks the two of you to move the boy over onto the kitchen table. You want my noodle arms to carry a child, okay? I take both of his arms, and I guess you take both of his legs. Yes, we're the strong ones in the group, if you can tell. <laughs> and they were both like, ah. Oh. The two of I, you. I'm venturing to say, like, we we have a. There's a risk of us dropping this poor boy. Yeah, we like use your thing to like guide him over, and it just looks like we're doing the work. Oh, actually, this is a great idea. So we we okay, we we try. Maybe it's too hard, uh, and then you you yeah, and then we have the disc or the, the skateboard go to the table, and then it's like, wait, maybe we can make it tilt. Can I make this disc tilt, so we can just roll him onto the table? It's your disc, man. You do whatever you want with it. Disc man, dude, blast from the past. Um, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, I, I got, I get it to tilt slightly, and he, uh, maybe he, I, I don't know. You tell me, uh, Ravels, if we, if does he roll onto the table or does he slide or? So the the disc, if I recall correctly, I just tried to use my my Max mouse pad. That doesn't work. Uh, the disc, if I recall correctly, uh, is only floating, uh. Uh, floats three feet above the ground, so you can get him over to the table, but the two of you are still going to have to lift him up and put him onto the four and a half foot kitchen table. So, okay. here's what you Ready can Nazi. do. Okay. Actually, considering I'm going to give you two options, okay? Uh, you're both doing the work. So you can either each of you can roll a strength check or athletics check, and we'll say an athletics strength check to do it, or one of you can roll it with advantage. <laughs> Because the other's helping. Let's both roll. Let's both roll. Just uh, strength, I guess. The scene will be different regardless. Okay, three for Moxie. What do you got, Fignacious? Oh, okay. wait a second. That's a, that's a stealth. Wait, I didn't mean to hit stealth. Where does strength go? You need the the other S. You can, the strength you can, S. You can roll athletics, or you can hit the strength button at the top. Where where oh, right. uh, your eight is? Damn it! There we go. Hey, I still. It's gonna be a 13. dog shit roll now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so it matters. That's an average of an eight, which isn't great. Uh, so we're gonna play it like this. So uh, Figgy gets up and and grabs. You know, he's you already have the boy's arms and upper body, which is at that age might actually be the heaviest i know at our when we get a little older our legs get heavier than the rest of our body combined i think but um you grab it and you put his like his shoulders up on the thing and you hold him and you're helping moxie and moxie like you're struggling the, the feet like slip out of your hand and almost hit the ground like but you're bo- you're both essentially are able to get him up onto the table and the entire time uh the doctor's just sitting there mouth agape like <laughs> Can fuck? we use our mage hands to like make sure this kid? Like, <laughs> double mage hand uh, plus our hands. Up his head. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you catch Wait, the doctor. Mage hands can each do ten pounds. Yeah, you catch the doctor mouth agape, yeah. like what the hell? And you both are like look at each other and you say uh huh, and you both mage hand and it helps take a little bit of the weight off and you get the you get uh-huh. the boy up. Uh, Your Griffin and Raymond, um, as this is going down. 
uh, people are coming up the steps of, of, of the house. They're trying to get in. They're knocking on the door. They want to know what's going on. Uh, the grandfather's still in his in his chair just saying, you you strong guys, come on. You can keep him out of here. Come on, don't, don't let him in. He's kind of laughing about it. Your griff turns to Raymond and he says, uh, I think it's time we show the good folks of Oakshire some steel. And he pulls out his long sword. Oh. And he opens the door. And he says, now, nah, good people of Oakshire, you know me very well. You know that I craft the highest quality weaponry, armory, and shields at the cracked anvil right on the corner of town over there. Now, if I were you, I would walk down these stairs and get out of this house before either you taste the end of the widow maker or you actually meet my friend Raymond. Okay. Uh Raymond standing because uh, Raymond you're kind of tall right yep he's about six one or two so Raymond standing imposingly behind uh Raymond what are you doing like you, while he's saying this stuff are you, how are you positioning yourself so uh Raymond Raymond uh, will walk right up behind him um and you're only four feet tall right yeah yeah he's just as four <laughs> tall asking <laughs> us <laughs> so <laughs> So I walk up behind him at six feet tall and I pull out both of my short swords. And and I just say, yeah, yeah. Why don't you all just get out of here? Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Go, 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 go on. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> maybe I, I uh, maybe take your game down a little bit. Cracking up. <laughs> What's that? I said maybe take your game down a smidge. Um, All right, no, that, that's, that. that's, that's great. Uh, your Griff, roll, uh, roll an intimidation check with advantage. Nice, natural 20. Yep. Cool. Um, so these people aren't being malicious. They're, they're very curious. Some of them, some of them are friends with the family. Some of them, maybe not so much. They're just kind of looky loos. But uh, they get the tone of your voice, and they see Raymond behind, and his imposing figure alone uh, is enough to to really push um, push them back. And they all kind of just they stop and say, oh, "You're right, you're right. We're, sorry, we're just we're excited, we're excited." And and some of them start stepping backwards. You hear them like you hear them chit chatting about things. But they get off the deck and they start to respect the privacy. Uh, some people actually leave and just you know kind of huff off and some of them some of them stick around like they go across the street and they uh they sit outside uh you know um they sit outside uh Jamath and Manith's uh the eatery they they kind of sit down uh, in the street or just mull around but they seem to be kind of good and you guys took care of business at the door uh meanwhile back at the table um after you guys deal with this and the doctor's mouth goes and uh closes uh he he puts his bag up on the thing and he he starts looking through some stuff and he he uh, he notices Fignatius. He looks at you and says, "It's an herbalism. You, you know herbalism, alchemy? Yeah. Here, I take, got great cheeses. Take this. Ch uh, what? what? Ugh, never mind. Uh, and he he grabs uh, he grabs some some plant matter out of his his satchel and hands them to you and says, "Can you make a healing potion?" Uh, I can make you a healing cheese. Uh, whatever, that's fine. Uh, he's like, it's gonna take, it's gonna take us at least a couple. I have one right now. I'm gonna give it to him now. It's gonna help him out. But this kid's been drained of a lot of blood. We need to get it back into him. I only have one. It's gonna take too long. Here, he gives you those ingredients. He says, one hand. He says, this is already halfway towards a new one. This stuff you need to turn into your healing cheese or whatever uh just get to it please and 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 looks at moxie and says i don't know if you're any good at that or not but uh you should probably help him out if you can if you don't mind uh but yes, you also because you're a great judge of character because i clearly was the one to choose to <laughs> carry you... a child but you also notice, Moxie, that the mother is like hovering and now she's pacing back and forth and she doesn't know. I what feel to do like you and I should just go make some tea because Fignatius looks like he doesn't want me to touch his cheese. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And uh, you you usher her off to the other side of the kitchen, and she's always constantly looking back, like worrying. But she's sitting there, kind of being quiet as uh, as she's like you're looking around to try and find how to how to do tea in this place. Uh, make an investigation check, Moxie. Let's see if you can search out the stuff that you would need, because she's not being of much help right now. Seventeen. Nice. So, you know, you find a teapot, you find where a kettle is and all that stuff. You ask her to light the fire, and she she does. It takes her a few minutes. She's kind of shaking a little bit. Um, She seems a little bit more calm than when you first talked to her uh, outside, but, you know, she's... Her son's on the table, and he's he's not doing so hot. So it, you know, it, the situation is what it is. Uh, Fignatius, while this is going on, you uh, you take the stuff and you start working on. It. You know that based on what he gave you, you're looking at it and you're saying, "Well, I guess I could put this in the cheese. Uh, I need to I need to go back to my shop. There's no way I can do this here." Uh, but you think you could probably pull it off? He actually gave you ingredients to be able to make a regular, just straight up healing potion, uh, and it was probably three quarters of the way done. So it'll take you two or three hours. Uh, but you'd be able to knock it out, no problem. Um, as long as, you know, you don't roll like garbage. <laughs> well, we all know I've been rolling tonight. But let's give it a shot. Um, the day goes on. And you guard, you know, you kind of keep keep track on the house. And, and uh, the council members stop by and everyone gives their best wishes and everything for a while to... Your Griffin Raymond, who more or less, you know, back and forth, but mostly kind of keeping an eye on the front, making sure people respect privacy. Uh, Fignatius, you've, you've ducked out to go make your, uh, make your, your healing cheese, which uh, you're able to do, but you're out doing that for a little, little while now. Um, and Moxie gets, you know, you get the mother calmed down. She's having tea and she's kind of sitting there by her son's side while the doc uh, is taking care of him. And he's looking a lot, he's looking a lot better. Um... Is there anything Yurgriff, Moxie, and Raymond would like to do in the two or three hours that Fignatius ducks out to go work on his stuff? Um, Raymond is going to turn to the doctor and say, um, uh, you know, Doc, I uh, I had a run-in with one of these, these uh, wispy things, and they... They seem to have sucked a little bit of life out of me. I don't. I feel weird. Uh, I know we got to take care of this boy, but is there anything you can do for me? Uh, he looks at you. <laughs> he burps a little bit, and he uh, <laughs> and he says, <laughs> and he says. Uh, you look like you can take care of yourself, but uh, I mean, I maybe make a persuasion check. Uh, as he's look, he is looking you over, and he's like, "You like you actually have like parts of your face, and and you don't even know it because you haven't looked in a mirror or anything. But like parts of your face are desiccated, and your shoulder underneath the clothing is also in that same manner from what this creature did to you." Um, and he says, "Yeah, I mean, you do look like fuck, man. You taking a little bit of damage there." Uh, I don't know what did that to you. Doesn't look good. Um, I don't know. Get some sleep, man. I don't know. Uh, I don't have any potions. I can't help you out with that. But roll of persuasion checks. Fifteen. He says, "Uh, I got a, I got a healer's kit. That'll help you out a little bit. Uh, I got a couple of them. So here, I don't need this one right now. He pulls out, he pulls out a healer's kit. This is like, it's just like package that's inside of his satchel." Uh, and it has uh, things like bandages and gauze and t uh, what would what would make for like twine, you know, tape, essentially. Stuff like that. And he says, uh, take this, go check yourself out in a mirror, apply some of this stuff. And he takes out this, uh, um, this out of the healers, he takes out this like bomb. And he says, apply some of this stuff and, and, and see if that fixes it for you. Uh, you can add a healers kit to your inventory. Uh, and it will tell you what it will do. It will tell you what it does and how it works and all that jazz. Um, and uh, you have that stuff now. Moxie, Yurgriff, anything you want to do in this time? Okay. Yurgriff um, sticks to his word and guards the door. Okay. Uh, when Raymond comes in with that request, I ask the mother if she's any good with like 
normal like medical bandaging stuff like that. She's a mom. She should know these things. Yeah. Roll uh roll a G20 for me, please. Just straight up. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use it for uh what she does for a medicine check, I guess. Okay. Um she says I mean I'm good at like, you know, bandaging stuff and I I could set a broken limb, but uh, she looks at she looks at Raymond and just goes I don't I don't know what that is. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Do you have makeup? Oh yeah, I, I have plenty of that. Okay, let's go have fun. Raymond, we're going to fix your face. <laughs> <laughs> as, as Raymond as Moxie drags Raymond uh along with the mother upstairs uh to the mother's room where she keeps her makeup. Uh Fignatius is back at his cart. Figgy. You uh you um you're an alchemist by trade and that's that's kind of what you what you're good at you're proficient with it like your alchemist supplies you're good at all that stuff and the herbalism pieces it's something you picked up along the way because you do make cheese you're a you're a fairly different uh, decent cheese cook rather uh but you wanted to you know we discussed this before i think in the first episode you want to be able to to create um you know magical Magical cheeses, healing cheeses, and things like that. Invisibility cheeses, all that type of stuff. You're a wizard. It's kind of just in your nature, right? Flatulence cheeses. Yeah, flatulence cheeses. Cheeses that do nothing. Colored cheeses, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you get back and you pull out uh, you pull out your herbalism kit, which you're not really proficient with, but you've been messing around with it and helping to herbalize your cheeses. Uh, as you start to take these components... Uh, the doctor gave you plus uh, you know you're you're you actually have a cheese that's already kind of underway and it makes more sense to infuse it with with underway. the stuff he gave you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man whatever two people that were listening to this just left they just turned out <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, that's Please. nope. Don't ever be sorry. It's it's awesome. Um, <laughs> so uh, it might make more sense to do that. And what what we're going to do is I'm going to have you make an herbalism check, and for you that just means you roll a d20. But I'm going to lower the DC a because the healing potion ingredients are already three quarters done, and b because we did talk about you already having cheeses being made. So I think this is kind of a good opportunity to give it a shot. Cool. Yeah, I like it. Ready? D20. Go. Nice. Ish. Okay. Uh, so you um you find one of the cheeses that's that's close enough to done, but it, it's more of like a it's more of like a burrata at this point. It is it is for those of you who don't know what burrata is, it, it's very mozzarella cheese, but it's much more uh, liquidy at this point. The center is still very very liquidy, and the outside is kind of hardened at this point. You find one of your burratas, and you take the stuff and you kind of mash it into into some other ingredients and you take a big chunk of that out and you put it into it uh and you're fairly confident that you have made a healing cheese uh more confident that you were the last time you made one and it made you very sick and actually hurt you um but you're pretty you're pretty confident with this one you're psyched about it and you make you make your way back eventually uh and provide it to the doctor and who gives it to the child and and this is the first time the child actually wakes uh he's not he's not like able to really eat the cheese but the doc takes a lot of the liquid that comes out of the burrata and and just kind of pours it into the kid's mouth like it's water um and the kid actually opens his eyes and starts to cough a little bit and uh upstairs we have Moxie Raymond and uh L'Oreal Emberspire and Moxie and L'Oreal have been working on Raymond's face. Uh, what would you have liked to have been doing aside from just giving him a makeup job? Well, no, I'm actually trying to, like, do some minimal, like, not healing, but, like, you know, first aid. But then I'm covering it up so he doesn't look so scary. Okay, so, Raymond, you have your, your healer's kit, right? Yep. Um... And I'm refreshing your page. Why don't you give us a read as to what that does? 
Uh, this kit is a leather pouch containing bandages, sobs, and splints. The kit has 10 uses. As an action, you can spend one use of the kit to stabilize a creature that has zero hit points without needing to make a wisdom check. Okay. So uh, medicine in, check. In the case of this, uh, what you're going to use your one use for is to patch yourself up. Um, we're not going to give you, like, it's not going to stabilize you. You are stabilized. But each use of the kit in this, in this manner is going to give you one HP. Um, so you, you use the kit, you use one thing of the kit, you start bandaging pieces, putting the salve on it and stuff like that. You do gain one HP back. Um, I think this is a cool flavor thing, even though that's not what the item really does. Um, but then Moxie and, and L'Oreal, to keep her mind off things, starts to make you look better. Cause you, to them, you look like a goddamn skeleton on, on walking legs, like, your face is gaunt and your shoulder is all like blackened uh, and, and they just start making you up. What do they make him look like? pretty now. They make him look very gruff and like, I don't know. We're making him look uh, like he's been in a fight, but it's like the good looking thing. Like all, all, all of the people are going to think you're so strong now and so scary. Oh, you should have seen the other guy. <laughs> yeah, it's just like this. Now, is that what you're... Are you actually making him look nice, or are you just fucking with him? I mean, I am making him look like that, but then I'm also, like, putting a little bit of, like, pink, uh, like, eyeshadow on him, so he's also pretty. Okay. Um, as, as Raymond starts to look real pretty, you hear... This uh, is... Go ahead. This is some of my best work, I have to admit. You hear the coughing from downstairs, and L'Oreal speaks up and says, <gasps> Yankle? And, and she kind of just takes off and heads downstairs. I hate that name. I'm going to change it. Let's go. <laughs> um, it's at this time that, that everyone, everyone arrives in the same place, and the child is, is sitting up. The doctor's helping him up, uh, and Fignatius is helping him up a little bit as well. Um, and he's he's coughing. He he looks better. He looks he looks a little very pale still. Uh, and then you hear the doctor saying, uh, uh, "Yanko, look, you you've been through a lot. Don't don't move. Just relax. Calm down. Here, have some of this cheese. It I know I know it I know it tastes a little funky, but have it. It's good. It's gonna help you out. It's gonna help you out. And he starts eating the cheese, and he doesn't have like a grimace on his face or anything like that. And he just says, oh, "It's actually pretty good. I like it." Um, and he starts eating the cheese, and uh, it, it over time, as he eats this cheese, it will heal him to full. Uh, but um, his mom comes downstairs and sees that he's up and runs over, and, and uh, it's the quintessential, I'm not role-playing a mother and child right now. It's the quintessential uh, mother and child re, you know, rejoining after, after being separated and like near-death experience thing. And just go, eh. And they start, they start to hug. <laughs> <laughs> go, and eh. <laughs> they just go, eh. And they start to hug and they're crying and all that stuff. And uh, you guys have seen now firsthand the, the, the fruit of, of the work that you have done. Uh, you've you've saved this 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 child and and re uh, reunited him with his his grieving mother, um, and you kind of all stand back and 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 watch this as the doctor joins you and just says, "You guys, uh, you guys did you did a good job. That was a good I job." I stand up strong, hands on my hips. That's all in a day's work for the figgy bandits. Yes, guys, I've named us. It's not changing. I'm sorry, did you say something? Anyway, yes, you're so welcome. <laughs> is your Griff here this or is he outside? Oh no, you're there. You you hear it. You kind of been you, you after all that interaction you like you closed the door, you, you locked it and kind of just kept an eye on what was going on. Uh the group just hears a large sigh after he says figgy bandits. <laughs> um, and the doc says, go, what you think you can do better? Your griff says, mm, well, I'm sure I can do better, but right now there are more important things to deal with and it isn't naming these 
three strangers in a townie, some would say. We have to capitalize on this opportunity. It's all about marketing and branding. I'm clapping at you. I don't know why you are clapping so vigorously or what marketing it really is, but I mean, I really have no retort to anything you just said to me. And then I raise my hand and then I, I give myself a high five with my mage hand. <laughs> and then oh, I just walk off. Man. Uh, uh, <laughs> um the doc, uh Zimtag, he uh he just says, Look, uh seems like you guys had a, a hell of a day. I wouldn't mind hearing about it over a drink sometime, but I'm gonna tend to the boy. Uh he looks at Raymond and says, You uh Kind of like looks at you a couple times and he just says, you, uh, you, you look real good, guy. Uh, nice to have you. And then he, he turns and he starts to chuckle a little bit. <laughs> Ray, Raymond says, uh, yeah, uh, uh, wait, <clears throat> says, um, uh, yeah, thanks, skin tag. Hey, how's Keg? How's Keg doing? <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. I couldn't. <laughs> and then I, I mind talk to you. I'm like, I think I'm rubbing off on you, Damon. <laughs> you all know the boy's name is Jankle. Anyway, look. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Mr. Lin will want to have his own congratulatory bullshit from you know his own mouth. Uh, but as a member of the council, I uh, I just want to say you did a real good job. And uh, you newcomers to town, you are welcome here anytime you like. Uh, if you're trying to find a place to stay, if you're trying to look up a, uh, uh, you know, if you want to get yourselves a, a house or something like that, plenty of plots of land, just uh, let me know. I'll put in a good word with the council and we can uh, we can try to take care of you. Uh, you're a Griff. Thank you. And he, uh, he turns as your griff, uh, stops him for a moment. Um, this is the doctor, correct? Yes. Now, doc, I, uh, I know you're a man of the council. What are the chances that you could set up a meeting with the, the mayor, myself and my friends? We have much to discuss. Uh, Chances are pretty good, man. Um, look, just uh, tell you what. I mean, I guarantee you, Mr. Lin is probably sitting out there right now waiting to get in here anyway to see how things are going. Uh, you know, you know you've know, you known him long enough. He's, uh, he's a handful sometimes. He does a good job. I mean, he does a good job, but he's a handful sometimes. And he, he, you know, he wants to nose in on everything, but I, just go find him. I'm sure he's in the crowd, or if not... Maybe he's back at the lumber mill hanging out. Uh, let him know that we talked. Uh, he'll talk to you. You know that, man. He'll talk to you anytime. Well, I do thank you for your time and your service helping this boy. Me and my friends will get out of your hair now. All right. Yeah, feel free to check back. I'll let you guys know if I need any help with anything. But uh, thank you again. And he, he turns and uh, starts to walk away. Um, in the other room, you hear... Hey, hey there, before, before, you, before you get going anywhere, why don't you, uh, why don't you come in here, give me a little rundown of how you saved my grandson, and you look in there and you see the old man rocking back and forth, drinking something hot. Does he look loaded? Oh yeah, absolutely trashed. What's and the, I go up to him, I say, share some of what you're having, and we'll share some stories. Your Griff? What's the grandfather's name? Because I presume your Griff would know this. Yeah, his name is uh, Graf Uncle Emberspire. 
Now, Graf Fungal, I know you've been drinking some of that dwarven lager, and that thing does kick like a mule with a bunch of bees around its face, but uh, we may need to get going and not spin some yarns, if you know what I mean. Uh, whatever you say, you crazy smith, you. Come back. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for saving my grandson, though. That's that's that was mighty kind to you guys. <laughs> um, I don't know if this was established. Is the population just like dwarves and gnomes, or is it a bunch of every every race? It's or a bunch like of a, just a, a mix of few. Um, it was semi-established. So uh, I think when when I gave a rundown in the first episode, it was uh essentially the town was. Uh, was populated initially and settled by uh, by dwarves and gnomes, um, but over time uh, others have come here. So the, the higher population is dwarvish and gnomish, but there are humans. There are some elves, uh, more humans and half elves than there are regular uh, full elves, uh, and then others kind of pop in and out. Uh, like you don't really see in in Damara itself. You don't see a whole lot of things like turtles. Um, just because of mm -hmm. the the where where it's located, uh, tieflings are scattered all over the lands, which everyone knows. So, like Moxie is probably not the only one that's been through town, but definitely the only tiefling in town right now. Um, yeah, that's kind of what you get. Okay, thanks. That's all I wanted to know. All right then. Uh, and you all head out into the uh, into the early evening. It's uh it's been a while. You guys, you know, you went searching. It didn't take you too long to get. You know, to get down there after breakfast and, and find the, the boy and bring him back. But you spent a handful of hours, you know, watching the house and taking care of helping the mother out and helping the doctor out and all that. It's it's like later afternoon. It's probably pushing like five o'clock now. Um, and it's it's in the fall, so it's starting to get a little darker. Um, the sun is probably up for another hour, if that. Uh, but the day is yours. What would you all like to do? I feel like we had plans to drink and see who was going to survive my drinking contest. Now, before we do that, does anyone need any uh, weapon or things repaired? Raymond, um, Raymond says, um, yeah, well, uh, my short swords haven't been sharpened in quite some time. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe you can take a look at those, and uh, I don't know if you have any other uh, arrows or something like that you can help me with. I believe that I may be able to craft you what you need, my friend. Excellent. And uh, he's going to take Raymond's... Uh, short swords and go back to the cracked anvil and uh, start cleaning him up and uh, making him some arrows and checking in with his uh, little assistant that he lets run the shop when he's not there. Okay. Um, so I don't think I ever actually established. We established where it was, but I never put it into the thing. So real quick, uh, I'm going to throw it in the map. Uh, number 20. Am I coming in hot anymore, by the way? No, you're no, you're good, man. Okay. Uh, I will also, uh, your griff, can I, can I just get some crossbow bolts? I want to deliver them to those very nice guards. He cracks like a half smile and he says, uh, I can make you some crossbow bolts. That should not be a problem. So, uh, I know our, our viewers don't have it, but for you guys, at least, uh, on the map, uh, number... 20 is uh is the cracked anvil uh it is situated in the same house that you live in the anvil is on the bottom floor and you live above it uh so <clears throat> is anyone going with your griff while he does this or are you guys kind of doing your own thing well i'm oh. going to get the bolts that i want okay. i'm going back to my cart okay R and uh, just checking i just have a cart and a tent right i don't have like a house or anything yet uh, you so you definitely have a cart. Uh, whether you want to be in a tent or if you want to be renting a room, uh, at the Wanton Thief or um, uh, Jam at the Manith is up to you. You could make that decision. Oh, I'm renting a room at the Wanton Thief. Okay. 
Um, so you go back to your cart. Uh, you start. You all kind of head off in the same direction because it's the same way you have to go anyway. Uh, Fignatius splits off and says he'll meet up with you later. Raymond, what are, are you following him along with them, or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm. I'm going with him to uh, have my sword sharpened up. Okay. So, um, you head towards uh, what's the name of your place again? The uh, Cracked Anvil. Cracked Anvil. Okay. Uh, so the rest of you head towards the Cracked Anvil, and uh, you walk past the um the statue of the uh, <clears throat> the statue of the the giant horse uh in the center of town. Uh, and the, the fountain area, and you head over to the cracked anvil, uh, up on the left, and the three of you enter in. And what do they, what do they see, Yorgriff, when they enter into your place? So when you walk into the cracked anvil, uh, first is a, it looks like a, um, like a display case, but it's actually, there's like nothing displayed in it. On top of it is, uh, a few shields that are currently being sold or out for sale along uh the left wall are different weapons different swords hand axes uh, along uh along the right wall is there are different types of armor hanging up chain mail heavy plate half plate um and there is a small gnomish man standing uh behind on a stool behind the display case his name is Enabar squiggle branch he is assistant to your Griff Anvil Hands. Uh, he does most of the he does most of the sales, minds the shop when your Griff is away. Um, behind that is a wall with an open door, and you can see there is a a, a large anvil behind that door. If when you go into that door, uh, there is the large anvil in the middle. Behind that is a hearth, um, and then a few other smithing uh, tools in the back that. And that is where Yergriff does most of his work. Very cool. So um, we had talked about this uh, in session zero before we started the campaign, uh, that everyone kind of is going to have their own uh, their own friends and or acquaintances in the world. Uh, is en It's Enabar? Yes. Enabar is en Squiggle Branch. So is, is, does he just work for you or is Enabar like more of like a friend and acquaintance, something like that or what? He works for him. Okay. Uh, I would say he's probably an acquaintance. You okay. know, he's been working for him now for maybe fifteen years. Okay. Does he have any uh, any special skills or anything like that? Uh, he is. He deals mostly with leather. Uh, so if someone needs, like, you know, if someone wants a dagger but they want the hilt wrapped in leather, then that's what. Uh, and a bar will work on once the blade is made. Very cool. So I think uh, and a bar is uh, once worked for uh, Norway Leather Works, uh, which is actually in town, um, and it is situated uh, in uh, area fourteen, uh, room, place fourteen, which I actually can't see on this current map. Um, oh, it's down here, actually down by where Fignatius's uh, cart is, um, and he he probably worked there for. For a while, um, but not originally from the town, and uh, it wasn't what he was hoping. And you offered him a job a while back because you needed you wanted to bring some of that leather work in house, and you did. And he took the job, and he's been here pretty much ever since. Uh, in terms of uh, Enabar being you know being your acquaintance, and I think what we had talked about with acquaintances is that their acquaintances are essentially. Um, uh, kind of like hirelings where they will help you out in certain ways, but they're not gonna like go fight for you uh, Friends are more like more like a hired help where like you could probably pay somebody to come on a quest with you if you really wanted to uh, But he's an acquaintance. So he's he, he's always gonna be truthful to you uh, He's gonna help you out with whatever he can, but he's not gonna sacrifice himself, you know I'm uh, me. And I, uh, just want him, I want him to tent shop yeah, do you have a do you have a voice for him or? I don't. Okay, so uh, you um, you you walk in and and, and you start to show around and and uh, he he straightens up a little bit. Like no, he's not a slouch. He's always doing his work and everything. He's actually going through the books right now and, and he's kind of balancing the uh, the um, the goods that are ready for sale, the equipment that still needs to be made, some of the other products that are coming in, the ores and things that you still need. He's kind of working that stuff out and he he sees you and just says. 
Ah, Yer Griff, it's uh, it's good to see you. I heard uh, I heard you found the boy. Uh, who who are your friends? N nice to see everybody. H how's it going? Uh, I'm I'm Enabar. Uh, who's uh every it's so uh this this is my friend Moxie and Raymond and we are here. Yeah, first off, Enabar, very nice to see you. How is the shop today? Everything's good. Uh, you know, I went out back and I started wrapping a couple swords up. I think uh. We got we got a long sword, a short sword, and a dagger. It's ready to go. Um, just trying to figure out the best price for it. I mean, you, you did real good work on it. I actually spent a lot of time on that dagger with the the leather work. So I think you could probably get a fair fair piece of gold for that. Um, the stock's getting a little low. I think we're probably going to need to have a look and see what we can do about getting some more ore in. Uh, we're, we're running kind of low on on steel right now, and that's kind of a big deal for a lot of the stuff you do. <laughs> you know. Um, so, uh, is there anything you needed right now, or? Well, there are a few things I need you to do, Mr. Anabar. The first is I need you to make my friend here, Raymond, some arrows. And, uh, he takes, he takes one of Raymond's arrows and he hands it to Anabar. And he says, you will see that this notching point is usually not as deep as Mr. Raymond's, but we need this exact. I need you to go out back and I need you to find goose feather to put on the fletch so they really fly very well because he is a sharpshooter. I saw him take something down. Ooh, boy, that was super quick. And then make him five arrows, please. And then I want you to make my friend Moxie here five crossbow bolts. And I need you to use the leather wrapping around the arrowhead to make sure that they stay on correctly. All right. Um... So we already have uh we got about ten crossbow bolts ready to go. I had uh I had the guys we know over at the lumber mill make up the shafts and everything, and I put those those uh those bolt heads that you made on already. Uh the fletching we're doing okay on. I think we get enough of it to cover these needs at least, but we're gonna need to get more of it. Um I think we should probably do that, make that order soon. I'm not sure where around here we're gonna find it. Unless maybe you can just find it out in the woods on your travels, you know. Um, anyway, what are you looking for? Oh, uh, you know, usually goose feathers do real well. I mean, if you can find, I hate, I hate to take them from a hawk because hawks are pretty awesome. But, you know, if you find a dead hawk or something, you can find some feathers for that. That'd be good. Uh, the traders haven't been through in the last couple of weeks. So our, our, our options have been kind of limited. Um, but anyway, he pulls out, uh, he pulls out. Uh, five crossbow bolts out of like a, a barrel from behind and you see him checking off on the sheet that that they're marked off as as used or sold and he pulls them out and he says um i could throw some leather pe leather strips on these is that how's that sound and he shows them to moxie uh i mean i don't i don't really care what they look like they're for uh those guys back at the you know the place you know what? Let's, uh, Anabar, let's keep the leather for the paying customers. So, uh, yeah, no problem, boss. Uh, and he just hands over, uh, hands over five crossbow bolts to, to Moxie. And they, they're, they're fine. They're, they're regular crossbow bolts. Nothing super special. Yeah, these are great. These are perfect. Best work I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, the, the metal on the ends of them look real good. Uh, but, you know, they're just standard crossbow bolts. Uh, he says the, uh, the arrows, uh, man. Hold on a second. You see him running through the books. Uh, he is going to roll. Uh, 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 uh. I'm actually going to use your griffs because I didn't have my thing open. So I'm going to roll a D100. On your griffs character real quick. 31. Okay. Um... He says, uh, I'm, we've got one, two, three. He says, we've got three, uh, three arrows right now. I mean, they're, they're a little longer than, than that, but they aren't really longbow arrows. I, if you give me a few, I can go take a trip over to Lumber Mill and see if they can hook me up with, uh, with some longer pieces and I can just outfit them. I can pop the tops off and, you know, the, the heads off and the backs off and pop them on these ones or new ones. Uh, let me go, let me go check it out. Can you, uh, can you send the shop for a few? Yeah, I will be, uh, I will be here shopping in my friend's short swords. 
All right, I'll, I'll be back. And uh, he, he excuses himself and heads out uh, northwards towards the lumber mill. Uh, and, and you have any wood needs that you get, you typically get from the lumber mill. Um, you know, you're not a Fletcher by any means, but it's not super hard to, to take what some of those guys know how to make already. Uh, and then just attach your own components to it. So he goes off to go buy uh, to go pick up some longer shafts, so it'll work better with the longbow. Um, but you take uh, you take Marty's stuff and you head out back. Uh, is the intent Ooh. to just sharpen them, or is it to like make something new? What's what's the intent? Who's Marty? Uh, I don't know, I don't know who Marty is, but I take it sword Raymond. Anyway. Raymond, sorry, <laughs> Marty McDrive. Um, God damn it. The right now he's going to just sharpen them because that's what Raymond asked of him. Okay, that takes you almost no time at all. You actually have a turning stone, um, and you have a nice seat for it to get yourself nice and comfortable. And you pull the two. Um, why don't you roll? Uh, I'll let you roll two, two smiths checks, smith tools checks. Just one, one roll for each sword. Uh, so you just roll a d twenty and add your proficiency. Ooh, the first is a uh, gross. Yeah, crit fail. And what's my first? It's a, it's a three. Okay. What's the second? Second is a uh, eighteen. Okay. Cool. Uh, so uh, Marty, um, he works on Not these Marty. for. God damn it, Raymond. Raymond. Different campaigns. I will. I will get over that soon. Uh, you know, you want to know why? It's because I've been writing storyline for Marty McDrive this week. Anyway, mind blown. Other stuff that we will, we will get back to that campaign. Sorry, it's not going to be online. We are way too far into that campaign to put that one online. Maybe, uh, maybe someday if we ever open a Patreon. No, anyway. Um, so, uh, Raymond, uh, he hands you the first one, and uh, it's not that it wasn't sharp. But it was a you know a little more dull than a brand new sword would have been. And he hands you the first one, and it it just looks like normal. It doesn't look anything special. But then he gives you the second one, and uh, you see him before he starts working on the second one. You see him kind of crack his neck a little bit and stretch his fingers out and give him a good good crack. And he he works on this one and he's back and forth for it. And he spends a lot of time on this one, probably like a better part of 20 minutes. And the other one, it seemed like it took him five. Maybe he just was off his game or something. Uh, but he hands it to you. And uh, he says, here you go. And you look at it and you, you know, you run your fingernail across the edge of it to see what it does. And it slices you a little bit. Um, for the sake of this, because I like the role play in doing this. Um, one of your short swords gets a plus one to attack roll and damage one time for the sharpening uh so mike put that in your notes somewhere uh you can use it on the first time you attack with it essentially just add a plus one to the attack roll and damage if it hits uh, i think this is kind of a cool a cool little feature uh and yager if you uh you knew like you knew that first one like uh, it's been a long day <laughs> but you're like whatever and, and you, you, you i don't really know this guy and then the second one you did a little bit better because then you thought about it and you were like, mm, it's, it's my craftsmanship though. You know. But uh, overall, you accomplish what you set out to do. Um, hey, hey uh, Eargriff, this looks, this looks really great. Um, sounds like you need some feathers. Uh, any way that I could help you out with that? Maybe you need me to go find you something and shoot. I mean, if if you want to give back and give us some goose feathers, maybe some hawk feathers, maybe you come across a turkey or two and you bring us some turkey feathers, that would be absolutely wonderful, my friend. Raymond, roll a d100 for me, please. I will do. Uh, 31. Okay. Uh, you, you have three turkey feathers on you now. Um, I think for the sake of this, like, I don't want to have to send us out in our campaigns, like, 
collecting mundane items and stuff like that, like we're doing World of Warcraft garbage. Uh, so I think that, like, in the case of something like this, it's cool roleplay, and I think that, you know, a 31 on a D100, that, that's worth three of those. And because of your character and what he does for a living, you just happen to have those three on you now. Uh, and you can hand them over. I, uh, yeah, I, I pull them out and, and say... Um, well, I don't have that many now, but next time I see a, a winged creature, I'll take it down. Here's three to get you started. Well, I do appreciate that. We are going to make you some incredible arrows, boy. Don't you worry about that. Now, what, I what I would also like you to do, Raymond, is uh, make a note for yourself that uh, when you are traveling, things like that, that you would be interested in trying to collect, you can use that during role playing downtime. Sounds good. Cool. Um, about the time the swords are done, uh, uh, Enabar comes back, and uh, he has a he has like a bundle of uh, much longer pre uh, pre cut pre um, uh, pre rolled uh, shafts. And he says, uh, "You know, we we only have the the three I can cannibalize. Uh, I know you have a handful of arrow tips, so I can probably make." Maybe maybe a total of 10 if we have enough uh, feathers. Do you, do you have any feathers? We only have maybe enough for two back here. Well, my good my good friend Raymond here has blessed us with three turkey feathers. Three turkey feathers. That's well, wow, that's good for good for about 12 of them. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I can take care of this. Uh, I'll just cannibalize what we already have. Make some new stuff. Uh, I'll use the rest of the arrow tips or the arrowheads. You're gonna have to make some more though, your Um We'll be out after that. That should not be a problem. And uh, once me and my friends are done here, maybe tonight you and I can discuss getting some more steel in this uh, in this smithy because we are, like you said, we are running very short. Well, he uh, he pulls out a pocket calendar and he starts to sift through and he says, uh, "I mean, it is it is right around that time of the season where you usually take the trip down to the capital, so." Maybe uh maybe that's gonna have to happen sooner than later so you can pick up the wares. Depending on the route we take, we may want to go see your Griff Longsteel as well. Alright. Sounds good. Um yeah, let me know. Let me know what we decide to do. I'll make these things up. Uh you guys go get some dinner. I mean, I I heard what you did, and that's mighty good of all of you. So uh go get some dinner, see how things are going, and I'll check back tomorrow morning or maybe even later tonight. Uh, what time is it? And he looks out, out the window and he says, oh, I could probably have these done the next couple hours. No problem. You oh, thank do, you, my good man. You do excellent craftsmanship. Meanwhile, Fignatius Mangelopper, you arrive back at your cart and you start checking over your cheeses, the ones that are cooking, the ones that are that are, are done. And the ones that are starting to get a little older than they probably should be. It's not quite winter time yet, so storing things is still a little tight. Uh, what do you? What would you like to do? Uh, well, first thing I want to do is just clean up shop. Feels like I've been gone a while, even though it's only been a day. But I want to get all the dank stuff and move them. I'm going to dig a pit and pop them into the pit to extra ripen. Okay. Because there can be some special compounds that come out of that. But I'm digging it safely enough away so that I don't get paralyzed by the fumes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you uh, you collect what you need. Uh, you grab your shovel and you head and uh, if you don't have a shovel, you can add one into your inventory because sure. Uh, and you, uh, you head kind of closer to the edge of the woods. Uh, it's not far. It's, you know, maybe like 50 yards. Nothing big deal. Uh, you find an area between two trees that looks like it's not very off walked through. And you start digging. Once you have it dug, you, uh, you pull out some water. And you, you mudden, you mudden the, the hole a little bit. And kind of seal the edges out. Uh, and make yourself essentially like a little ground pot. And you take all the things that you have and you start placing them in there and getting them ready to do what you got to do. Uh, how do you, how do you like bury it? How do you do this? I don't know anything about this in real life, so I can't go too far with this. So I want you to give me the shit. Oh, yeah. Um, and just 
out of game uh, or out of character. This is a totally made up thing, so I don't think that people actually do this in real life. But who knows? Cool. Okay, I didn't. Know, dude, Back you could you could have fooled me. I had no idea. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I dig uh, circular holes about two feet in diameter, and uh, about a foot and a half down. I put a bunch of hay, grass stuff at the bottom. Throw on all the different types of cheeses, and then I um, I take um, some essences from my uh alchemist supplies um and drop them in unnamed um i cover the top with more hay and uh and i light the hay on fire so as to slow smoke cook whatever is inside there with the essences that i've dropped in okay what's your intent what are you trying to make uh i'm just experimenting right now Okay. I'm 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 trying to push the boundaries of cheese mongery. Okay. So you take some alchemy supplies and you take some of the herbs that were left over from what the doc gave you and you put your cheeses in this hole and you you sprinkle this stuff on, you kind of mix some of it together, cover it all up and you light it. Roll a d100 for me please. All right. For the sake of our two viewers, there should be a public service announcement around this point in the episode. Do not do what we are describing to your cheese. You will get sick and possibly injure yourself permanently. Thank you. Okay. And uh, roll a d20 Four. and add your proficiency. All right. Uh, 17 okay. with proficiency. You, um... You spend a little time on this. It doesn't take long. Uh, but you pull out what, what's left uh, after everything's said and done. And you, for experimenting, you did a pretty good job. The cheese is still there. It smells pretty friggin' good. Um, the D100 roll was to make, because I know we had talked about in, in episode one, uh, having you be able to learn how to make like you know magical things with your cheese. The D100 roll was to let me figure that out, and uh, none of it's magical. Nothing comes out super special. Like, the ingredients that maybe could have turned this cheese into magical cheese uh, were wasted and didn't do that, but it smells phenomenal, and you take a bite of a piece, and holy shit, that cheese is awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack it up. I'm going to cut off a little slab for, for just my personal use. I'm going to wrap it up nicely. And uh, put it on the side so I can bring it uh, back to um, the my my room and the tavern underneath, and see if they want to buy a, a wheel of uh, of cheese. Okay. Um. So some time goes by in between between Fignatius doing what he's doing and and uh, Yorgoth Moxie and Raymond doing as well. Uh, you all find yourselves meeting up for that drink that you had discussed having before. The question is, did you want to go to the Wanton Thief, or did you want to go back to Jamath and Manith's, the uh, more upscale place in town? Wanton Thief. Yeah, we have to go to the dive bar so we can just be stupid. Okay. Sure. I'm uh, into it. Fignatius, you make, you make your way towards the um towards uh um the cracked anvil uh and as you start heading that way you see uh Yergriff and and Moxie and Raymond coming out uh coming from as you as you all gather together and you start heading off to the wanton thief which is uh number 1 on our map um you start to uh start walking that way and you actually see uh Jeffrey Lynn Sr., the uh, the owner of Oakshire Lumber and the current ipso facto mayor and he head of the council of Oakshire, coming out of uh, uh, Harry's Pottery, the big building at the end of the road. And he's, uh, he's kind of walking in your direction on his own. A few moments go by, and... Uh, you notice him, and he's, uh... He doesn't seem very happy. Uh, he's kind of mumbling to himself a little bit, and you can hear that it's a little, like... 
like anger almost but uh he shakes that off real quick and puts on councilman face the second he notices you all kind of meeting uh meeting him face to face in the middle of the road so, uh, oh you're a griffin uh, everybody else uh, it's good to see you it's very good to see you uh sorry i'm having a weird day um holy crap you guys saved the boy he's doing he's doing real well i hear Good job, very good job. How are you? How are you guys doing? I heard you were, went down in the, into the temple. Is that right? I'm gonna Do mind you... link with him. Or actually, sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to step on. Um, no, go ahead. I, I want to actually uh, ask. Do I? So I don't see anything here that requires me to get permission from the creature that I mind link with. Uh, you might not have any. I actually don't. I can't say anything because I don't want to give it away because no one really knows. So, uh, looking at it real quick, um, yeah, you can just speak it to any any creature within ten feet of you. Um, so then I'm gonna mind link with him, and then take the voice of um, a child again, and uh, and, be, and and then just whisper to him. They know you can't hide. Make a performance check for the voice of the child. I was, just, I was hoping for a child voice when you did it. Yeah, uh, so no, knowing that you critically failed on that, can you give me the actual voice that goes in his head? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yo, kid, they know. <laughs> they know what? you can't lie to them kid you all see him starting to look around like what the hell is that Did you guys hear that what is it he he reaches for his dagger and says something's going on are you going crazy <laughs> wait <laughs> he looks around the group and was like what are, you, what are you fucking with me I, I look around and I'm like what's this guy talking about and then I give him like a weird look. Mm -hmm. Like, how could we get in your head? Make a deception check. I'm gonna Rough. I'm gonna be squinty eyeing the whole time. Deception. Something something. No one ever said about yeah, being I, in I, his I, head. I wouldn't have asked for one if you didn't say that. Yeah, I know. Okay. He says, uh, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just tired. Anyway. Why are you so tired? What did you do all day? Don't worry about it. It's just town business. Oh, it's just town business, like saving your children. <sighs> Look, think, thinking of that, actually, I was hoping to be able to speak with you all tonight. How is everyone doing? I heard you, uh, rumor is that you ran into some creatures or something. I again inject the... They know. They know. Don't lie to them, Ken. You see him pretty frazzled at this point. Like that that anger that he had before when he was walking up has gone away. Uh, and now he's actually starting to get worried as you guys are all looking at him with his like like faces and, and he's hearing these voices and he's starting to freak out a little bit. Uh and he says, I, I <clears throat> I can't do I can't do this right now. Look, uh, Jurger, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk tomorrow and he just runs away. He just leaves. Uh you see him uh down the road. He gets to a point and he yells out to a number of people uh and you see a handful of uh of town's guard come up and flank him on the sides and he starts start uh talking to them and not not long after you see them go off down different alleyways and things like that. Um no idea what they're doing. Is he like this a lot? Like, is this like a common occurrence here? Well, I I then tell everybody, like, oh, that that was me. He seemed a little sketchy, so I was just trying to get some information out of him. What did you do to him? I was uh, I was telling him. I had this awesome ch child's voice. You know how like when I was trying to lure you guys downstairs. And in a child's voice, I, I, I was in his head. I told him, they know 
don't lie to them. But apparently he got freaked out. I don't think Something. it had the desire. Well, if your desired effect was freak out, then it worked. I mean, something is amiss. We something bubbled to the surface. This cheese is rotten. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do believe that, as you so eloquently put it, the cheese is rotten, but my friends, I could really go for a drink right now. Me too. I could go for a drink eight hours ago. And I think I'm still carrying my cheese with me, right? Because I still have to go to the wand and t thief and try to sell it to him. Yeah, you have a big cheese bag on your back. Uh, it's next to the boar's head, which you have not taken <laughs> off. <laughs> um, I was just, just going to I literally was about to ask about that boar's head. Does it just still become part there? of my attire. Um, but it's also I, covered I, in undead muck. I, I Yeah, I start to notice the muck, the, uh, the flies, uh, the maggots. And um, I unsling it, and I just, uh, I, uh, let's see, where are we right now? Ooh, okay, no, I, I re-sling it, and I'm like, I'm going to have to get rid of this later. But then, the reason why I asked is, I cut off a little slab of the new awesome cheese, which I have to name. Um, new unnamed awesome cheese, one for each of the party members. And uh, we toast, and we cheers with the cheese, and we each take a bite out of it. Does everyone accept this? Or actually, I, I offer a toast and a cheers with the cheese slabs. Does the cheese smell normal? Make a perception check. I like that we have to ask that. Well, it, <laughs> how does the cheese? But you said smell? it smells amazing. Oh, well, maybe yeah, not to it, this yeah, maybe not to everybody. Like, it, it it smells pretty good, Moxie. I mean, it doesn't smell bad. I mean, you've you've smelt his other cheese before because he was offering it to you guys a number of times now, and every time it's been like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. And Moxie, I recall specifically passing. This time it actually smells really good. Okay, then I will try it. Your Griff will try it as well. Raymond has had some of uh maybe he hasn't actually, but either way, he's gonna have it. Okay. To Figgy's bandits. Raymond drops the cheese on the ground. I just put my hand down. Your griff <laughs> says, uh we'll we'll keep trying to that boy. You stick to your cheeses and maybe the <laughs> four of us will talk about a name at some point. Well, until we get a better name, Figgy's Bandits. I feel I like Ass Bandits might be better at this point. <laughs> <laughs> are you suggesting that? Or are you, is this? Okay. As you all head into the Wanton <laughs> Thief, uh, the, this inn is set in a wooden building. It's one of the few in town that doesn't boast some sort of ancient stone foundation, where a lot of the town is built on, on previous remnants of whatever used to be in this area. Uh, as you head inside, you notice that the ceilings are unusually low. Uh, not so much that it would be an issue for, for most people, but some of the taller folk may find themselves needing to duck their heads as they walk around a bit. Uh, Raymond... Raymond is not too tall, uh, but he's, he's close. Like, the, the ceiling in most spots is very close to your head, maybe within a couple of inches. Uh, you would think that, like, some of the real tall elves or things like that, there's no way they would be in here without ducking down. Um, be My horns hit that shelf. Be careful. You're going to hit your head. Yeah, your horns are actually pretty close to the height of Raymond, so that's actually not that far off either. Uh, but uh, the walls and ceiling of the first floor are carved with runes of some type. Um, there are or there are almost always a handful of, uh, or more people in here drinking, eating, and gossiping, and... Tonight's no different than any of the night. In fact, there's a, a lot more than uh, Fignatius is, in, is used to, and Moxie, because Moxie, you've been staying here as well. Um, there's a lot more than anyone has been used to in this place, uh, Raymond's first time and all. Uh, the innkeeper is uh, is sitting behind the bar, and uh, he's he's well known at this point to be a, 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 young, a young man. Uh, he's human. He's named Bula. Uh, he is well known to have been a retired thief at one point in his life. Um, and uh, keeps a fine steel dagger at his belt, which holds up relatively common clothes. 
uh, although they aren't from this region. They're from wherever he is originally from. And uh, Eurogriff, at the very least, would know very well that no matter how many times he's asked, how many drinks he's had, how much money he's given, he will never reveal where he's from. Uh, it is always a a uh, a point of betting in the bar. People uh, people have a lot of fun over it, uh, and it's just kind of something that it kind of goes around town, and people people play with the idea of like you know how mysterious he must be. Uh, his beard is short and well kempt, uh, and uh, it, he wears um, something from a past life around his neck, uh, and on his fingers in plentiful numbers, he has like a, a ring attached to a. Um, uh, a necklace, and then he has rings on every single finger and his his thumbs as well. And he is serving uh, he is serving a pot of stewed beetroot and a mug of perry to uh, to somebody at the bar at the moment. But you all walk in, and uh, it's it's not super loud, but there's probably like you know fourteen or fifteen people in here, often different groups doing their thing. Uh, Moxie and, and Fignatius, you've been here for a couple of days, and you recognize a few of the regulars at this point. They're already trashed in the back of the room. Your Griff knows them well. Um, they're the ones that, you know, they aren't very well known in town, um, because they don't want to be. They just, they live here, they make their living, and they get trashed, and that's kind of all that they do. Uh, but you do see some people you know, you notice, uh, or you know. Um, and you all find a table, and you sit down, and you make orders. As you see fit. So, Yorgriff, you're telling me that nobody knows where this man is from. Nobody. I mean, there are hypotheses and there are guesses, but this gentleman keeps his past life very, very close to the vest. I'm going to find out. You hear uh, well, what? a uh, a half elf uh, at the table next to you leans over uh, uh, towards Moxie and says, I, "I heard he's from the deep south. I heard uh, I heard he came up over the over the Sea of Swords." And then, uh, and then after that, he traveled all the way across the kingdoms in the south, and then made his way up to the Sea of Fallen Stars. Now, he, now he's here, and this is, this is he's he's a rogue of some type, and he's he's dangerous. You gotta be real careful. Oh, and, oh, uh, dangerous. Oh his, no. Uh, his buddy nudges him and says, "Don't don't listen to him." Uh, and uh, this is actually the first time you've seen another one uh, in town since you've been here. There's a, a tiefling with him, and he says. Uh, he doesn't know anything. There's, there's no way that guy. Look at him. He looks innocent, and you look over, and he does kind of look relatively innocent. Like he doesn't look anything like that. Um, but who knows? Does he have any evidence of looking like he is from some sort of sailing background? Like anything that I would recognize, or something like that? Ooh, uh, why don't you make a perception check? We got 11? 11. Um, he looks relatively clean cut, uh, considering the, the stories so far that you've heard around your own table and these other people piping in. Um, he does have this air about him that you have seen on the high seas. Uh, that dagger that he has is not, it's not normal. It's not something that, you know, the average person has of a dagger. And the way he, the way he positions himself, even when he's just serving somebody, that right hand is always ready to get at that dagger. You you know this. You've seen this before. You probably even practiced this at, at one point or another. Uh, so whether he's from the high seas is a, another question in itself. But he's definitely well learned in the art of defense at the very least. Gotcha. All right, time to drink. Someone those are all the drinks. Your griff uh, goes up to the bar and orders four, uh, four ales. I guess we'll start with. Okay. Um. So you uh you get up there and you order uh four mugs of beer. Um. They cost you a total of twenty silver pe uh, copper pieces. And he just uh, as you get up there, he says, Ah, your griff. It's good to see you. Heard uh heard you did some uh some good stuff today. Uh, tell you what, man. I know it usually costs 20, but this first round's on the house. This is on me. Good job. Well, I do appreciate your kindness, but it was uh, 
it was our pleasure to find the boar. If we can make Oaksha a place where people want to stay, then then we do our job. Man, people in a small town, man. We need to stick together. It doesn't matter if you're from here or not. It's a small town. You know how it goes. This is dangerous lands, man. Good job. Tell tell everyone else I said the same. I will relay that information to my compatriots. As Yergriff uh, gets back to the table with the, these mugs of beer, uh, you all grab them and, and you watching him walk back. You see, uh, <clears throat> you see Bula, the, this guy um, of of much uh, question, uh, raises a glass uh, into the air. Uh, towards you guys, and uh, without any prompting, just says, To Yergriff Anvil Hands and his friends, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I don't know your names, but to all of you, <clears throat> this this one, everyone is in your debt here. Small town. Keep it safe. And he chugs the whole thing back real fast. Uh, a I've number been of staying other people. Here for a week. You don't know my name? <laughs> Another uh, a number of other people, uh, uh, you know, cheers as well, and some other ones are just kind of half-assed with it. You know how it usually is in a, in, a, in a bar when people start just yelling stuff. Um, he comes over about five minutes later after you guys have been kind of just drinking and shooting the shit, and he uh, he brings over a, uh, a a plates of boiled partridges and dried peas uh, for each of you, and puts them in front and says. Uh, Add this onto the free tab for the night. You guys did a good job. And sorry, Moxie, I didn't see you all the way over here. A lot of people in here right now. I am very pink. I know, but <laughs> there's a lot of people. Don't worry about it. Quit, quit messing with me. You know how I roll. Fignatius, and he just kind of turns away from you like uh, the smell. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the boar. Um. <laughs> I, I unsling the boar's head and I put it under the table. This is uh, Raymond. Uh, he says, rather, he said, I didn't catch your name, stranger. How's it going? Uh, my name's Bula, and he reaches out to Raymond to shake his hand. Uh, name's uh, Raymond, and I shake his hand. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, if you ever need anything, if you need a room, let me know. I've got two open right now. Uh, Moxie and Fignatius got the other ones. Uh, if you need a room... One of them's yours, no problem. First night's free. Feeling pretty, uh, pretty good about how things went down today, so that's that's good. Oh, uh, if I'm not imposing, I'll take a free one. Yeah, free for the Appreciate night. Appreciate it. After that, it's uh, it's uh, two cop or two copper pieces a night. All right. One night, one night for me then. Thank you. Yeah, and he looks over and he says, uh. Moxie, Fignatius, uh, you guys are paid up until the end of the week, so don't forget, if you're going to stick around longer, we gotta we got to settle up after the weekend, all right? Hey, Bula, along those lines, and then I slam the big hunk of cheese on the table, would you accept this as payment? Try you it, piece. Just try it. Just try it. You watch him... You watch him pull his dagger at a speed that is beyond you, Fignatius. And he just cuts a piece off and it's like he it's like he cuts the slice and stabs it at the same time. It's so quick and it's up to his mouth and he pops it off. Wow. Wow. A lot, a lot better right. than that garbage you brought in the other day, man. No offense, no offense of course. Uh, he puts I'm just getting used to the water here. Puts his dagger back. He says, look, man, I... I can actually probably sell this. Um, tell you what, the, the whole wheel? Yeah. Let's maybe cover the price of the room and then split whatever's extra. He picks it up and kind of gets his own weight to it. And he says, uh, I give you like, uh, I'll give you like five or six gold for this worth. I mean, that'd cover your room for, that'd basically cover your room and, and food for, Room, food, and drink for at least two weeks. The way you've been eating, at least. The way you've been drinking. <laughs> um, I will... I will say... How about the next three weeks? And we've got a deal. Make a persuasion check. Balls. 
All right, you got a deal. Um, yeah, yeah, you got you got a deal. He uh, he takes it, and uh, she shakes your hand, puts it under his arm, takes it back to the bar, and you actually see him immediately almost start carving up pieces and putting them onto plates uh, behind the bar. And uh, as you guys kind of continue your conversation, Fignatius looks back every once in a while and uh, and sees. He's got, you know, he's got this, uh, this, this board that he puts all the prices for things up on there, and he adds, uh, he adds, uh, figgy, figgy cheese to it. He just writes figgy cheese, and next to it, uh, he marks down, uh, two silver pieces a slice. And you do the quick math, you do the quick math in your head, and you say, God, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> because he... <laughs> Because uh, you got a good deal, but he's probably gonna, he's yeah. definitely gonna make a profit off of it. He's making a good bank. Yeah. Not like, not, you know, if he, if he offered you six gold, he's probably gonna make 10 or 12 gold off of the deal. But you don't yeah. have to deal with the cheese anymore. Yeah, it's an easy sell. Yeah. Big Ignatius, have you ever considered making pudding? Pudding? Why do you ask me that? Just curious. I could. In you a could call it life. figgy pudding. Could it have cheese in it? I don't see why not. I'm not the chef. I'm going to try that. I am now going to... You have inspired me. I am going to try this. I am often amused, so I've been told. You, uh... You should make a song about... Cheesy pudding. Cheesy figgy pudding. And then okay. that will be how we sell the cheese. I will make pudding. you a jingle if you make a successful figgy pudding. All right, deal. That's my next project. So is there anything else you guys would like to do this evening? Other than vomit I, at the idea of, of figgy pudding with cheese in it? <laughs> yep. <clears throat> No, um, nothing else. I I would want to do I want to do a long rest for sure, but I don't know I don't have anything before that. Okay. Raymond um, Raymond wants to try and drink Moxie under the table. I accept okay. this challenge. As they start discussing this, Yergriff, it sounded like it looked like you had something you wanted to say. Uh. Yeah, Yurgriff was going to also challenge them to a drinking contest, so he's in. Biggie, are you getting in on this too? Uh, give me one second. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I just, I just need to see something. Okay. Um, are we playing uh, in the way that um, we don't use up spell slots? Um, when we're not in combat oh no you you use the spell slot it's used for sure because you do you never know like these these three could get into a drinking contest and moxie could punch some dude in the face and then you're in combat so like oh but what i'm saying is like say i like when uh when we went up to the gnome and i cast hideous laughter on him um it, when we weren't in combat it was kind of a non-combat spell action does that still take up a spell slot Technically, yeah, that would have that would have done a spell slot. I don't know if we did it at the time. I didn't think about it, but yeah. Anytime yeah, you're gonna cool. use a, uh, use a spell or ability, you have to you'll have to check it off. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. The four of you start to order drinks. What are you What are you drinking for this this contest? Are you drinking beers and just pounding them back over and over again? I feel like we have to drink the same thing. We can't drink different things. Yes. So. So you know on the menu Agreed. they have uh they have stout, they have ale, uh they have black they have regular ale and then they have black keg ale, which is the ale that is made uh by the uh the black keg uh brewery in town. And they also have uh mugs of perry. What's perry? Uh, what is it, perry? It's essentially a, a type of uh wine. Well I, don't I know. believe maybe. We should, uh, in the lieu of small town, have ourselves some black keg ale. Let's see which one, uh, which one of y'all tries to take down the dwarf. 
I feel like we're at the disadvantage here, but I'm here for it. <laughs> okay. So you've already had. Do like to drink local. So you've already had one drink, and you start to make orders of black keg. You call, uh, you call Bula over, and you say, uh, you let him know that you're gonna you're gonna be doing a drinking contest. You need constant uh, uh, rounds of black keg ale to come through in mugs. And he obliges, and he starts bringing him over, and he says, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a, t make a tab, because this could go on all night. And he looks at Yergriff and says, uh, they don't know what they're in for, do they? No, they don't have the slightest idea. <laughs> okay, so for each round of drinking, you guys are gonna make a constitution check, uh, uh, I'm gonna do a constitution saving throw. Um... We're going to say that for the first round, you already drank a thing. You you each take the next, the first round of, of, of them, and you have it. No problem. The second one, no problem. The third one, no problem. And you guys are starting to get into it now. You're four beers deep, three of which are, are on your tab. But uh, it's now time to, like, really buckle down and start getting these in. So for this next round, I would like you guys all to roll constitution saving throws. Shout them out for me. 14. 11. 12. 7. Okay. Um, <laughs> Vignatius Manglebopper, Yurgriff, and Moxie, and, and Raymond, you all pound them. You pound them all down, all the way. Uh, the very first round, uh, the, this, this fourth round, technically, of, of the contest... Uh, Raymond, you, you're falling behind, you're falling behind. Everyone up to this point was like, was drinking at the same time, finishing at the same time, slamming it down. It was just like over and over again. At the same time, you guys are killing it. This time, Raymond, you, you fall, you fall behind because you're now four beers deep. You've been traveling. Uh, you, you don't drink this much that frequently and you're not, you're not ready for it. And you come down late and you don't, you don't make the mark. And as you, you hit it, the glass shatters on the table and you said you close your eyes for a second everyone looks at you and now a crowd is starting to to, to kind of gather because you guys are yelling and stuff and uh you're like uh, I'm, I'm out i'm out and and shake raymond, raymond oh no don't be sick and i shake him really hard <laughs> your griff, your griff pipes up and he sees all these people not watching he goes ladies and gentlemen uh, what you are seeing is the destruction of young Raymond, for he cannot handle the drinking. I uh, think that Vignatius and I finished before you. Well, you know, a dwarf likes to take his time. Don't hey, fall too far behind. As long as you meet the mark, you're not, as we like to say in Oakshire, pulling a Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> we've never said that. I've been here a week and I've never heard that. It is now a thing. <laughs> Raymond, you uh you disappointed, you stand up and steady yourself and then go mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and you rush off to I run outside. And as you're running outside to go to go to go beef, um you hear uh you hear Bula say that two gold for you and uh and you run out the door as your tab your tab is at two gold the next round comes to the table for the last three of you i would like you all to make constitution saving throws please and give me your numbers 30 20 who look Nat at that 20. look at that 20 wow. natural 20 and a 20 okay look at us <laughs> okay uh all four of you <laughs> Uh, three. Sorry, all sorry. Three, all three of you. Uh, you just you grab it and you pound it all back. You pound it all back. Fignatious. You all finish at the same time. Like you wicked quick. You're ready to go. You're all staring at each other. As you're all staring at each other, Fignatious reaches over to somebody who's walking by, grabs their drink, and, and just pounds it back as well, and puts that <laughs> down on the table, and just goes amazing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> And that person's that's like, yeah, that's my drink. Kidding, is it? <laughs> Shut up. He's winning. Uh, the crowd, the crowd is, is like everyone who's in this place is, is now kind of watching this go down. And as, uh, as round five ends, we, uh, we move into round six. And I'd like the three of you to make another constitution saving throw. As you hear outside, 
bah, bah, <laughs> as Raymond is just destroying. <laughs> 15. 13. <laughs> And okay, uh, this round goes through and, and everything is doing pretty well. Uh, everyone's doing pretty well, but Moxie, you, you, you get to halfway through and you just you're so full, you can't, no matter what you do, you just cannot drink the rest of it. You're not, you didn't roll under a 10, so you're not in throw up mode, but you know better and you know you can't, you can't go on and you just, you bow out. Um, and as you as you bow out, uh, the crowd starts to kind of like cheer, and a couple people come over to you. Like, oh man, I had like five gold on you. Uh, next time, you'll get them. Next time, don't worry about it. You're Moxie, right? Moxie, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, I like you. You're cool. Next time, next time. Here, it's drink. I'll still win if they if they puke. Then I still win. And he goes, hey, th this one's on me. And you just look at him like I can't, I can't. <laughs> um. Uh, Bula comes back over with with two mugs and looks to Moxie and says, uh, one, two, three, four, five. No. Mm. What do you mean, no? You, you, you owe okay, me. Okay, next round. Let's go. Yes. You owe me two, two and a half gold there, Moxie. Put that on my, put that on your tab. Mine is one because you forgot my name. Uh, you're staying with me for another week. Fine, fine. Uh, and the last two are up. This is this is the last round. The two of you are looking at each other in the eye, just like you got this. But you both, you both. This is like yeah, just like that. You get this the quintessential like I'm not trashed. I'm fine. I'm so good. But the other person's looking at you as if you look like this, <laughs> like holding yourself up. But you both feel that, like that you're just like this. Yeah, I got this. I got this. And that's not that's not what's happening. But the two of you, the round comes up. We are in round uh, six, I believe. Uh, I would like the two of you to roll me a constitution saving throw. 18. 19. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, as round six comes up, you take you guys take the two and you pound them both back. And you both drink them, and you, you kill them, and you slam them on the table. And you just, both of your hands go up in the air, and the crowd starts going nuts. And then, uh, very Lord of the Rings-esque, your griff just kind of <laughs> wavers a bit. And Gimli falls backwards. <laughs> and passes out on the ground behind him. Oh, uh, no. I am impressed. Very impressed. It's all that cheese. It's all the cheese. I have special cheese for this occasion. Um, and Bula comes over and grabs Fignatius' hand and, and wrist and raises it into the air and says, "We have our winner." Uh, <clears throat> you see a couple friend, a couple people that clearly know Yurgriff are like picking him up and put him, <laughs> you know, or, you know, put uh, their shoulders so they can carry him off. Uh, and they take <laughs> Yurgriff off to uh, off to where he lives to to put to put him to bed. Um, Bula says, uh, oh, you're not living this down, your griff. Bula says, uh, to Fignatius, as, as you know, Moxie has already kind of moved her way upstairs at this point. Uh, Raymond has not come back inside from throwing up. Uh, and Fignatius, uh, Bula says, uh, nice job. That, uh, that fine gentleman over there liked the show. He said he's picking up the tab for all of you. Oh. And uh, you see Who's him point. Gentleman? You see him point, and there's a uh, the old man, the very old man, the one that Moxie had gotten have got into it with the day before that that morning at over breakfast about the uh, the undead in the tower uh, from episode one. Uh, it's him, and he's just sitting over there by himself uh, with a shot glass in front of him, and he doesn't look nearly as. Uh, old manny decrepish decrepit like he was before like when you first saw him and his wife they were both like can't hard of hearing they both look like they had to walk and hobble around on canes it's clearly that man but he doesn't look like that he looks like he's actually in pretty good shape i um i asked bula who who is that guy or I, who is that guy never seen him before no idea Um, and do, do you know if he's, where he's staying? Didn't ask me for a room. Thanks. 
and then I go and try to walk in a straight line towards this guy and sit down next to him okay and say hey thank you for covering our tabs tonight it's not the problem the voice is different it like the the facial features of this guy he's an older man he he looks like that old yeah. man to every aspect but it's not that old man decrepit voice that you heard either this he this, this like weird accent from an area you've never been to comes out and he says it was not the problem i enjoyed the uh i enjoyed the show here that uh, you and your friends are the uh, heroes of this town no we just did one small thing for the town they're celebrating us i don't know if we can call us heroes though hmm. i mean you showed you the metal enough at least in my opinion not for me too Buy out your 10 gold tab you all just accrued. Who are you? Why are you so interested in us? My name... Uh, my name does not matter so much. But... Uh, I does not matter so much. I I'm not, Ignatius. That does not matter to me all that much either. Um, money is what matters to me. And I have a fair amount of it. But I do not have the necessary <clears throat> youth that I once had. And there's something that I want in a place that I cannot get to. Perhaps what is it? you will do this for me and I will pay you. But you gotta tell me, what are you trying to go for? There is a special trinket. It was part of my family for many, many years. And it was stolen from us uh, by an adventurer who I've tracked to here. The townsfolk tell me that uh, he ventured into the uh, into the tower on the edges of town. The old uh, people call it the Wizard's Tower. I do not know what it is, but he never came out. It is an amulet. If you were to traverse that decrepit place it's falling it's falling down and my old bones cannot handle it if you were to traverse it and find his body and what became of him and collect this amulet for me i would pay you let's say a hundred gold a piece talk it over with your friends you need not find me and say yes or no just if you do it Come back with the trinket, and give it to me, and you shall see your gold. Where do we find you once we bring the trinket back, if we decide to do this? I'm typically in and out of town. Uh, I travel to uh, Vasa every once in a while, and I will be here for three or four more days, and then I shall go back to Vasa, and if I must, I will... Now that I know where this... Asshole who stole my family's property had got off to. If uh, your group does not want to do this, this is fine. I shall find myself some mercenaries who will do the job and probably pay them less. Where do we where do we find you here in town while you're here? In case we need more information. I will be in this very seat tomorrow night. This city? This in seat. Oakshire? The seat, where I am the sitting seat. right now, the seat. You have a weird accent, bro. Yes, where it is from? very it is very foreign. Do not worry about this. I like it, man. Where is it from? Oh, it is from far, far to the east. Past the Wait a second. That's wicked far. It is not close. I mean two, three thousand miles. It does not matter. Anyway, if you would like to do the job, then do it. If not, I will get it done sooner or later. No worries. Either way, I see that your friends have gone off for the night, and you are the champion, and to you. And he just t tips back a shot to himself. Uh, and you see him kind of stand up and just say, excuse me. And he kind of passes by you and just walks out, puts a hood up over his head, and uh, heads off. I'm not going to follow him. Although... I'm going to walk out the door and check on Damon. 
Uh, you go outside and uh, and and uh, Matt Damon is uh, or sorry Ray- Raymond is uh, sitting on a bench uh, outside uh, in the street proper uh, with his head over uh, a rain barrel, um, which is now filled with both water and his vile, disgusting innards. I uh, I I walk over to him. I'm like, let's go. Let's get you upstairs. I sling his arm over over my shoulders and i do my best to help him up and uh, bring him upstairs and you do that and as the group as a whole head off to their various beds in their various places i mean technically three of you are inside of the same place and one of his one of you is not but as uh <laughs> what what do you keep calling it oh the, the figgy boppers is that what we're saying no figgy bandits <laughs> figgy bandits <laughs> No, fig- figgy bandits. As the uh, the quote unquote figgy bandits, not figgy bandits, go off and earn their long night's rest. You can all take a long rest. That's what we will call tonight's session. <laughs> da, 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 da. <sighs> that was good. That was good, guys. Nice yeah. job. Yeah, uh, I would like to. Yeah. I would like all of you to level up to level two. Yay! Hey. 